All right, welcome back to Paul's Bass Academy. We're going to do something a little bit different today. I've been stuck in the house now for, seems like close to a month. I don't know if it's been quite that long, but it has been raining cats and dogs day after day after day, and I'm really sick of it. I have not been able to get out to the lake and try anything, uh, seems like since the beginning of February. So I'm ready to get out on the lake and try something else. I'm sure you are too if you live in this area and you're dealing with all the rain. Uh, today's episode, I'm going to do something, like I said, a little bit different. We're going to set up a couple of baits for my next trip, and I'm going to set up a couple of things that I plan on using once the weather starts warming back up. Uh, we're going to set up a couple of these new trimmer head baits. So after I made this video, I started doing a little bit more research. I wanted to make sure I get my terminology correct so I don't get a lot of negative comments for calling things something that they aren't. These baits are actually called trimmer shad by Jinko Fishing. And what you put those on is a type of lead head that's called a scrounger head. Uh, different companies have their own versions of those. So just to use the term more generically, uh, the lead head itself is called a, a trimmer head if it's made by Jinko Fishing, but it is a type of scrounger head. Scrounger head is the more generic term. And I'm gonna set up another umbrella rig. Um, I used one of these to make one of my last videos and ended up losing it before I ever got anywhere near fi finished fishing with it. So I'm going to set another one up. I'm going to show you how I set it up and I'm going to set it up a little bit differently this time. The last one that I used, um, I actually missed one fish on it and I'm pretty convinced that it hit one of my fake baits, if you will. In Tennessee, you're required to only use three hooks on a uh, fishing setup like this. So I had two fake lures, if you will, on the top two hooks. Okay, so once again, I, I think maybe I've just had too much cough medicine while I've been recovering from pneumonia. I gotta get some terminology straight. I've been looking for the official terms these people use online and I can't figure out what they really call these things. Uh, the best thing I can come up with is uh, the two baits that are on top are called the inactive baits. They're the ones that you don't want the fish uh, to strike. You wanna try to make them less, ap less appealing to a bass so that they're not as tempted to hit those as they are the bigger baits on the bottom. I've called the ones near the bottom of the Alabama rig that actually have a hook in them called active baits and so let's call the ones on the bottom with the hooks the active baits and let's call the ones on the top with no hooks the inactive or teaser baits. And one of the hits that I had I felt a hit and then nothing else and I'm pretty sure that would have meant it either took the tail of one of the baits and didn't get it really well or it struck one of the top baits that didn't have a hook on it so I lost that fish. So I'm going to do something a little bit different to this that I've seen some other people doing to help make the top two baits less appetizing, excuse me, yeah less, that, less appetizing but also less appealing uh, for a fish to where it really wouldn't want to hit the two top baits. So. Stay tuned, we're gonna set up a uh, trimmer head. If you don't know what that is, again, this is all the rage in bass fishing are these trimmer heads. We're gonna set up some of these that are uh, Jinko fishing, if I can say it, if I'm saying it correctly, Jinko fishing. This is the Tennessee River trimmer head. So we're gonna set that up today. So stay tuned, hope you enjoy this episode. All right, and we're back. And the first thing that I'm going to set up is this uh, Yumbrella Flash Mob Junior umbrella head, in case you want to see which one this is. I don't honestly know if one is better than the other, but this is the one that I'm going to work with today. It's Yumbrella Flash Mob Junior. Pretty small compared to some of the other ones out on the market. So when you get this out of the package, this is what it's going to look like, just like this. I'm going to take the rubber band off, get that out of the way. It may actually be easier just to cut it with a pair of scissors to be honest because it's going to get tangled up in everything. All right, boom. This is what it's going to look like right out of the package. The first thing you're going to probably start looking at this and let's see, I'm afraid you're not going to get a good view of this. Let me adjust this camera up just a little bit. Hopefully that's a little bit better angle. So the first thing you're going to do when you get this out of the package is start looking at how the arms that come off the head are angled. And what I'm noticing right out of the gate is this one could be out just a little bit. 
and I'm just kind of taking a look at it trying to see if I can get this to where it's all kind of bent out a little bit a lot of people probably take these and bend them pretty extreme pretty far out and the great news is you get to adjust this as you're fishing with it. If you're out on the lake and you want to make some adjustments to it, you'll be able to do that. It's not something that you have to set up and know how exactly how to get it set up right out of the gate. So this looks pretty close to me as to how I would want it set up. All the arms look relatively the same. May go just a little higher with this one. I'm gonna set that up. Okay, so I mentioned this in the intro. I get this out of the way. Okay, so looking at this this way, you can see the little fish head here on the front. Um, I'm going to take these top two arms, and I'm going to modify these, and we're going to set these up to be our fakes. Remember, in Tennessee, I can only have three hooks. I'm going to set up the two bottom and the middle to have the actual hooks on them. So first thing I'm going to do on these top two is I'm going to take off this little connector that came with them. Bend them and take them off. That's the little thing I'm taking off. I'm leaving the swivel on it. I saw a couple of other videos and the folks said they actually take the swivel off the top as well. I'm not so sure that I want to do that. That's something I'll have to experiment with and see if I think it makes more sense to leave the swivel head on the top or, or take it off. Again, I'm not really sure what I think is best at this point. So taking the other one off. There we go. There's the other one. So what I'm left with on the top are the two swivel heads and on the rest I have the little clip that came right out of the package and I'm just going to keep those again some people are recommending that you get rid of these and replace them with a split o-ring that's your preference uh, they say that these are actually not strong enough to hold a really large bass I'm gonna have to lose one on it before I believe that because it is it just seems really stout to me but you know like I said if I lose a bass then I'll worry about changing these out until now I'm not going to worry about it so what are we going to do on these top ones? Okay, so <clears throat> I bought a product. I think this brand is called a yo a ho a, a yo a yo ho I don't really know what that name is, but I think it's called a yo a ho And I got it on Amazon. And the first time I purchased this, I did not realize how small this was. I don't even know. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see it. I really should have paid attention and taken some measurements before I purchased this. Okay, this is a centering pin. And this is a four millimeter centering pin by a yo a <laughs> um, These are too small. I tried to thread this onto this swivel and I could not get it threaded on there. I just simply couldn't get it to clasp on there. Just, just made way too small. So. Round two, I ordered a different size. I feel like this one is overkill. This one is huge compared to the first one. This is a six millimeter, and probably five millimeter would have been just fine, but I ended up getting a six millimeter centering pin. You can get these from all different companies. You don't have to get them from a yo -a ho You can get it from, uh, if you really like name brand products, Owner makes one that's called the Owner CPS, which stands for centering pin system as far as I know. What you're going to do is you're just going to take this under that barrel and thread that on here. Just get it started like this and just thread it. And what you'll end up with is something that looks like this. Okay, you're going to do the exact same thing over here. Take another one Thread it. Until it's on there. Okay. Now, why am I doing that? Remember, I can't have a hook on the top. I, <laughs> on the last rig that I bought, I actually went ahead and I put jig heads on the top. And so when I lost my bait, not only did I lose the umbrella rig and all of the rigging, and everything else, but I had three, or excuse me, I had five brand new jig heads and five Kitek baits, and I lost every bit of it. So <laughs> you start getting into like $20 setups on these, it gets kind of expensive to lose them, so you don't want to lose anything that you don't have to. But this time around, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put 
some Kitek swim baits on this. Now, I want to make my top two baits to where they look like fish swimming in a group, but I don't really want them to be appealing to a fish so that it thinks it needs to hit this. I'm going to use two different sizes of these Kitek baits. I'm going to use two small ones on the top and two fat Kitex, excuse me, three fat ones on the bottom where the actual hooks are. Uh, for my setup, I'm going to use 3.8 inch swing impact fat Kitex, and for the two top fake ones, I'm going to use these little 4 inch swing impact. Uh, they're just called, I think they're just called swim baits this way. Swing impact. These are swing impact 4 inch. These are swing swing impact fat Kitek 3.8 inch. <laughs> they're actually slightly smaller than these, believe it or not. But they're just huge, big around. But I'm going to do something else to make these even less appealing. I'm going to make them slightly smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of these out of the pack. By the way, in case you're curious what color I'm using, I'm using electric shad for both of these. Let's see, I think actually these are going to be, these are electric shad and these are called Pro Blue Red Pearl, which to me, if I'm being totally honest, I can't see a difference. Maybe there's a difference and I just don't see it. But anyway, and let's look at the, let's look at the size of these. Here are the big ones. And here are the small ones. So given a choice, I think what I'm going to do is cut maybe, I don't know, half inch off this. This may, may or may not work. We're going to see. So what I've done is I've, I've made them a little bit smaller. And I'm going to try to, that's the great news with these centering pins is you're not gonna to have to worry about what is the center. You literally take that little pin and you line it up with the center of your swim bait and just press it in. And then once it gets in there, just start spinning it. Now I'm going to tell you right now, these, these six millimeter plugs are going to be massive overkill. You may not think so. You may not think they're overkill, but so this is what I've got is this. I can actually see the centering pin kind of poking out the edge there a little bit. It's just, it's overkill. We could have tried cutting a little bit of the centering pin off with pliers if we wanted to. I think probably for what I'm doing I'm going to be able to get away with this. I'm going to try cutting some of the centering pin off of this one. It's just, it's so large that in, in my case, I feel like it's just it's doing a little bit more harm than good. Let's see if we can cut just a little bit of this off. Cut just a little bit of it off. I don't know if you can see that. Cutting some of the centering pin off. It's a little bit shorter. Maybe it's a little bit more manageable this way. So after all this, if it was me, I think I would recommend you just get the 5mm Ayoaho brand to start with and try those instead. I think that's better.
Okay. So what do we have so far? We have the two, the two tops are shorter now. So you can do that either way. You could do whatever you wanted. One of these I just left the original size. It's super duper long. It comes way down in the body. The other one I cut, you know, uh, maybe a quarter inch off of it just to shorten it up a little bit. But the, the end result is they look, they look the same to me and I think they're gonna work. Okay, so what's next is we have got to set up our large swim baits, larger swim baits for these. I bought some of these little doohickeys. These are called hammerheads. I got these from Bass Pro. Uh, these are quarter ounce. I'm going for, it's still cold. The water's still cold. I think it's gonna be hard to get the fish to where they're really aggressive this time of the year from all the research that I'm doing. So I'm going for a smaller bait. I've seen people put like five inch Kitex. I mean, I've seen them put some really huge Kitex on these Alabama rigs. Uh, I'm sticking with a little bit smaller profile bait, hoping that maybe one would still be interested in something like this, and I don't know. We'll see how that works out. All right, so I've got my hammerhead jig. Uh, I want this ultimately to look like uh, this when it's all said and done. I want this to kind of come out about like this when it's all said and done. Uh, with the paddle tail facing down. So I'm just going to kind of line this up. I'll tell you one other trick that I've seen some of these people do. You've got quite a bit of room on the back of these heads that you can use some super glue. It has holding arms, little tags on there that are going to help hold this in place, but you know a lot of people are recommending a little bit of super glue, and I have to admit that's what I'm going to do. And so if you look at how this is going to line up, the little rubber head on this isn't going to have a whole lot to hold on to because it's so rounded. What I'm seeing some folks do, and I think what I'm going to do, is I'm going to cut just a little bit of the face off of these just so that I have more room for gluing. Not much. I, I cut just a very small piece off the front of, of that. So there's that one. I'm going to go ahead and cut two more. Again, just a little bit. And just a little bit more. Okay. The other thing is, these things are greasy. When they come out of the pack, they're very greasy. So let's clean them off a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm cleaning these up. Alright, so I've got these ready for the jig head. So here's the next trick for me is figuring out exactly how to put these things on here. I know a lot of people make this look really super easy, but for me it just seems to be a struggle. I don't know why. I want the hook to come out. Uh, I'm looking at this and I'm lining it up. I'm trying to figure out exactly where that hook's going to come out. It looks to me like it's going to come out right in here. So I'm going to just nick it so that I can see where I want that to come out. I put a little nick in the rubber right there, just a little bitty nick. And now I'm going to push this through. I'm trying to keep that in the center. And I'm watching for where the hook, that's too soon. That's roughly where I want it to come out. And now I'm pushing this up on, up onto the bait, I'm sorry, up onto the jig head. So this is what I've ended up with. The little tails facing down, the hooks facing up. There's actually a split in the top of these. You can see that little split and my hook comes right up through the middle of that split. So this is what I've ended up with, is this. All right, and I'm going to I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on this. Put 
pull this down. I'm going to put just a little bit of super glue up inside this head around the shaft. I'll put the lid back on here so it doesn't spill all over the place. And I'm going to run this up on here like this. I'm going to hold it for just a few seconds. So that's what it looks like. To give you the profile look that way, then give you the side look, give you a look this way. The paddle tail is down. You can see the tail sticking down. It's facing you. Okay. So, I'm not going to bore you with doing that three times. I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute while I get uh, two more of these set up. And so what I ended up with is I've got three of these now that look the same, as you can see. One, two, and a third one. And I'm just going to finish setting this up by opening these hooks, which is just a matter of twisting this little thing. It just takes some work. And I'm going to just thread this through and then close it. So you end up with this. This is what it should look like. And so, theoretically, when this is running through the water, it's going to be hard for me to show you this, but <coughs> if you can imagine this running through the water like this, get this out of the picture here. So envision this working its way through the water. And you've got these two that are a little bit smaller. They're smaller profile on top. See how it's a little bit smaller compared to the big minnow looking plug. If you look and compare these like this, you can see that these are smaller in the profile compared to the ones below it. And if this actually runs through the water like this, and theoretically it will, hopefully the fish will not be as tempted to hit these on the top as they would the ones on the bottom that actually have hooks. The other thing is, these are now weighted. There's a quarter ounce, here's another quarter ounce, and here's a third quarter ounce. So this is at least three quarters of an ounce here on bottom of weight, and you gotta add a little bit of weight for these guys. And so in theory, hopefully this will run with these up in the water column and these down lower in the water column. So we're going for three we're, going, we're hoping for a fish to hit one of the three with an actual hook on it. So that's the A, the a rig, the Alabama rig, the umbrella rig, whatever you want to call it. And this is how I set that up. And welcome back. And now we're going to try something a little bit different. We're going to try to set up one of these trimmer head jigs. Uh, this is a fairly new concept to me. It's hard for me to believe that you can catch something on such a, a big jig. I, a uh, big setup like this. I personally haven't fished with anything quite this large before. Uh, so <clears throat> what have I got to use to set this up? I purchased this Tennessee River trimmer head. I specifically got this in, I think this, <clears throat> yeah, this is a three quarter ounce. Open this up. Three quarter ounce, you can see that's large. I mean that's that is a large, that's a big boy right there. <laughs> heavy, heavy gauge. And <clears throat> I purchased a couple of different trimmer head shads. I got these in seven inch. So you can see the two different types that I got. And the one I'm gonna set up now and show you how I set. So this one up is I'm going to use this. This is called a thread fin shad, though I can tell you living here in Tennessee, this is not what a thread fin shad looks like. Uh, but So let's set one of these up. This is what these look like. Fairly long, 7 inch, again, wobbly tail, straight back. If you look at this from this angle, you'll see that they're very flat on the top have a hollow belly, so you can set them up a couple different ways if you wanted to. <clears throat> what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to just run it right up on here like this. You want on the trimmer heads, you want these heads up. I don't even know if you can see the plastic. Hopefully you can. There you go. Now you can see that these have plastic on them in case I didn't let you see that on this one. This one has that plastic bill on it as well. And you do not want paddle tails on these. These are not going to act correct in the water if you put a paddle tail plug on here it's, or a, a paddle tail swim bait. It's just not going to act right. These are meant to roll in the water as part of their action. You go look up videos on YouTube of these and you're going to see these go through the water like this. And so if you put a paddle tail on here, it's going to change the action of this to where you don't really want it. So keep the paddle tails off these. Use these little flat straight tails on the back. And <clears throat> what we're going to do, again, and you'll notice there's no barb on this at all. This has no barb, but it does have weight down on the shaft of the hook to help this to behave correctly. And you're, when you put this on, you're going to want to run this way up here like this. I am going to, once again, cut a just a tiny little flat spot off the face of this because I want to be able to super glue it. <clears throat> and when I say small, I mean very small. I'm going to just cut just a little bit of the lip off. You can barely even tell that I cut it. But even that's going to be enough to get it flat up onto the face of this jig. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's going to help me to get lined up. Now what I'm seeing these people do for help lining these up, and I agree it's a really good idea, is I'm looking at where the hook comes out of the top of this. And I'm just going to kind of roll this over here and mark it with my finger. And I'm going to nick, kind of nicked the skin just a little bit right there. So that I have an idea where I want this to come out. I'm going to double check it. I like, I like where that came out. So I'm going to try to put this through the center of this as much as possible. I'm going to try to keep this right in the center of this. I'm trying to line this up and keep this centered. And once I can see this hook come through the inside of this, what I'm watching for is the hook to come through the inside of this so that I know that I can start really bending it where I want it. And now I'm going to see if I can hit that. I'm going to see if I can hit that mark on the top right there. Right there like that. And then I'm going to run this up its face it came out right where the mark is I like this this looks pretty groovy <clears throat> to me and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to super glue just a few dots just a little bit of super glue down here Push this up on the face of this. And there you have it. Now when you rig these up, do not take these off. You can see how this looks. Hopefully you can see how that looks on there. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the super glue. But you can see how this looks. Do not take this off. Leave this on here. You don't want to tie directly to the string from what I'm understanding by the research I've done on this. So there's the little bitty top and that's where you want to attach your string so that you're not encumbering the action on this at all. So I'm just going to let this sit now and dry. Uh, there's the plug. When it's done, this is your swim bait with it completely set up in its entirety. And now I have two. And I'll try these in a future video and let you know how the action works out on these, whether I catch anything or not. Now, another brand, if you don't like the uh, <clears throat> trimmer head 
Uh, trimmer Shad from Jinko is Castaic is another one that, that is really popular right now. The Castaic brand, I think it's called Jerky J is, is what you would look for. I could not find Jerky J's in the store. Probably can get those off Tackle Warehouse or one of the other websites, but I couldn't find them at Bass Pro when I was in there, so uh, I didn't get those. So I'll let you know in a future video whether these can produce any large fish like they're supposed to or not. Okay, so that's going to wrap up today's video. So I set up two different things. First off, I set up the Alabama rig, as you saw in the video. Hopefully you can get a good look at what this thing looks like. And then we also set up two of these uh, Tennessee River uh, trimmer heads by Jinko. Uh, Jinko Fishing, I think is the brand. I set up two of these. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use these and get much out of them this winter. I'm going to try. The next time I get in the water, I'm going to do some deep ledge fishing out of the main river channel with these and see if I can luck in anything. I think these may be more effective this summer. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do my own research. Uh, research, aka going out in the boat to figure that out. But thank you for joining another one of my videos on Paul's Bass Academy. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll also consider subscribing to my channel and giving me a like down below. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video. Good luck out on the lake and God bless. Thank <laughs> you.